The Feed. It's episode 119 of The Feed, the official Lipson podcast, the podcast that takes it beyond how to podcast into keeping you podcasting with podcasting tips and information for the everyday podcaster and taking you inside Lipson, the largest podcast host and distribution network since 2004. Hello, my name is Elsie Escobar and I am co-host and producer of this show as well as a community manager at Lipson, aka the podcaster happiness expert. Okay. Do you hear a difference in my audio today? Do you, do you, do you hear things all around? For those of you that listened to the last episode, you will remember that Rob had some microphone, microphone troubles. Well, in this episode, it is I. To keep things real, our family came uh, for a weekend trip to Pittsburgh, but alas, our van broke down and we had to stay for a few extra days and I did not have a microphone with me. So in the, at this time, I am recording outside of my in-laws house. Might as well do my best to allow you to hear my environment. And it is being recorded on my iPhone 8. What you will hear later with my conversation with Rob are my Apple earbuds. So that is the microphone that I used for our conversation. All right, here we go. On this episode, we dive straight into the Google podcasting strategy. You're going to need to listen at either regular speed or less, because it gets a little convoluted there. Getting permission from a sports broadcast to your show. Zoom H6 recording setup minus a mixer. The Twitter password breach. Shifty Jelly Pocket Cast getting bought by NPR, WNYC, WBEZ, and This American Life. Changing your title for your podcast and whether it affects it or not. GDPR. And of course our mean and median stats from end of March to end of April. All right, so if you want to get right to it, skip forward about six minutes. Okay, now let's hear from Rockin' Lipson Podcasters, Plant Trauma. I'm C.L. Frenari, and I'm here with Ellen Zakos to talk about Plant Rama. Our podcast was launched in May of 2017, and we put out a new episode every other week on Thursday mornings. So before we did this podcast, we worked for three or four years for the same garden app that identified plants and answered lots of different questions about gardens. And our users were mostly between the ages of 25 and 45. They made it very clear that they were not gardeners, but they were curious about the plants that they saw around them and they wanted advice about them. They wanted to know what to pull up from their garden, what to leave in. And they also needed guidance about indoor plants. So we already knew that there was a need for plant advice and we thought, that a podcast would really be the perfect way to connect with this audience. Ellen and I already write and speak about plants and gardening. We both have NPR experience, and I do a weekly live radio show on WXTK. So a podcast was really the logical next step. Yeah. If you had to ask us to summarize, you know, what Plant Rama is about, big surprise, it's all about plants. If it's about plants, we will talk about it. Our listeners want to know everything there is to know about plants. They want to know if they're edible, whether it's wild or cultivated. They want to know how to grow indoor plants successfully. They have questions about pests, about diseases. What they're looking for is an outdoor experience, whether it's around the fire pit or working in an outdoor office. And we are here to help them every step of the way. From raising flowers or tending a landscape to learning about how nature works, from growing vegetables and fruit to foraging for edibles in the wild, we talk about the astonishing and useful world of plants. Our goal is to give our listeners some insider information about their yards and wild spaces. So we usually start out by um, giving some information about an edible plant or two in, in our regular what's for dinner segment. And we also almost always include something for the plant new. And every episode then includes a main segment with in-depth information on, on a particular plant topic. And then we end with um, answers to a listener's question. On the technical side, Ellen and I are both Mac users. And at the moment, we have limited budgets. So we've gone with what we already have. We record our tracks on GarageBand while seeing and hearing each other via Skype. 
And this allows us to get clean tracks on both sides without being subject to, you know, the idiosyncrasies of Skype connections. But since we can see each other, we get that immediate visual feedback of uh, looking at each other's faces, particularly when we disagree. <laughs> we use identical Audio-Technica microphones, and that's to keep our sound consistent. And after we've got the tracks laid down, CL uploads hers to Dropbox, and then I edit each one to make it a little bit tighter, and and I add the music, compress it into an MP3, and send that back to CL via Dropbox. And then she writes up the show notes, finds the photos for the website, and uploads everything to Libsyn for her scheduling. Now, in terms of promotion, we blog, we post on social media, we interact with fellow podcast geeks via Libsyn, of course. And we also woo our listeners in live cocktail hour events, uh, podcasting live. And of course, by networking with other plant geeks and podcasters. So we hope we see you at Podcast Movement in July. Sometimes we stop and we think, oh, what would we do over if we could? <laughs> and one of the first things is that we started out by keeping our files where our website is hosted. For a bunch of reasons, it would have been simpler if we'd started out with a podcast host like Libsyn and then added those links to our site. We sort of did it back ass words, but you know, live and learn. Yeah. And, you know, we feel fortunate that we are both willing to say yes to an opportunity and jump in. Even if we don't know exactly what we're doing, we learn what we need to do to make it all happen. And we have to give a shout out to Phil Galston and Rebecca Jordan, who allowed us to use music from their song Record Player, which is on the album Asphalt Heart. We are also exceptionally grateful to Terry Gavin, who is our expert website designer. And we have also gotten a lot of help from the Libsyn team. We really think that we are breaking new ground with our approach because this is not a garden podcast. It's about better living through plants in every aspect you could possibly imagine. And we'll close this off as we do every episode of Plant Rama. We hope you grow great things, protect wild places, and play in the dirt. I know y'all want to get to know how to get featured on the show, so here's the spiel. You can send in a 30-second promo to the feed at Lipson.com. It needs to be 30 seconds or less and be clean, as in no colorful language. Attach it to your email and send it along. That's it. I will schedule it according to when I get these emails. You can also send in voice feedback. We love voice feedback. So if you think... I have something to say about that. Or if you have any other opinions that you feel that need to be heard, send it in an email to the show. Or, you know, you can respond to us via social media. You can also record yourself, attach it to the email, and send it to the feed at Lipson.com. We also have a blog feature called Rockin' Lipson Podcasts. This is essentially a blog post that highlights one Lipson podcaster every Monday with sometimes a limited audio option, which you just heard right before with Plant Drama. How do you get on the blog? Email the feed at Libsyn.com. That's it. All you have to do is ask. Got it? All right. So here we go. Here is our very first promo of this episode, The Strokecast, followed by my conversation with Rob Walsh, VP of Podcaster Relations at Libsyn, and of course, my co-host. Let's go. When I woke up on the morning of June 3rd, 2017, I couldn't use my left arm. A few minutes later, my left leg went offline. I was having a stroke. So what's a podcaster to do when they suddenly find their life turned upside down? They start another podcast, of course. In the Strokecast, I talk about rehab, recovery, the frontiers of neuroscience, and one-handed banana peeling, as I share stories from survivors, caretakers, medical professionals, and others impacted by stroke. Check out strokecast.com for more details. Hi, Rob. Good generic time of May the 4th be with you, Dave. <laughs> May the 4th be... I know, you guys, how fun would it have been to get this from May the 4th be with you, Dave. But alas, we are just taking the, the energy of the day and sending it to you during the weekend. Yay! Yeah, I I did my good um, uh, community service thing. I, I figured out that Fandango was going to have the tickets go on sale at midnight 
on May the 4th. I said, you know what? They haven't gone on sale yet. This seems odd. Oh, wait, May the 4th. So exactly at 11 o'clock last night, sure enough, I went online and Fandango had done that, but they hadn't sent out their notifications yet. So we got primo seats oh. right in the middle of the theater. And then I sent out a thing on Twitter and Facebook said, hey, get your tickets now. And then, and then about an hour later, Fandango came and sent their email blasts out. Oh my gosh. So, Look at you. You were like on it. I am such a nerd. Wow. I, See, that's yeah. the right time to use nerd. That that's, is where you say nerd, right? <laughs> Talking about Star Wars and Star Trek, in that situation, that's that's nerd. Geek would have been if I had hacked their system. Oh, my God. <laughs> and gotten the tickets that way. Right. Oh, my gosh. Fabulous. Well, um, shall we start talking about, um, you know, ever, I think the last time that we recorded, because we recorded early, and I feel that these new, this news kind of, like, dropped probably that right, it was right after it, it was, right I think it was right after, after the episode yeah yeah um so this is we're going to be talking about the new well it's the new in quotes google podcast strategy that has been getting a lot of press coverage right mm -hmm. uh it was all over the place so um do you want to take it up here and do a little yeah, chat about so, that so first thing, um, let's give a quote from, from Google, and, and, and this is, quote, our team's mission is to help double the amount of podcast listening in the world over the next couple of years, unquote, says Google Podcast Product Manager Zach Renault Whedon. And, and Zach is somebody who we know and we've talked with and I've talked with um, in the past. And, and, and first, let's get this out there. This Zach's team has had – a project in the works for a couple of years now. This isn't brand new. Um, there was a part of it that was a small part where if you search on, on Android devices, it would bring up some podcasts. And then they, they rolled out the other part of it, this new part, a while ago. So, And I think we've mentioned it on, on the episode before. And it's important to mention this. This is not a full-on native app for Android. Um, this is where... When you search an Android, um, either uh, it, uh, it does, does now support Google Chrome, by the way, uh, or, or not Chrome on Android. I should let me get that straight. Chrome on Android, not on desktop. So this is all about Android that we're talking about here, which is good because we need something on Android. And this is native and it's built in. And this is basically for almost all users of Android. Like it covers 90% of the users of Android out there. So it goes back multiple versions of Android. And how it works is if you go in and you do a search in Google, um, it will come up podcasts where you can actually play some podcasts. So if you search for a phrase and it happens to come across a podcast that matches up with that, it'll give you some play buttons. Um, it'll then, if you, if you want, you can click, um, uh, show more episodes. And if you show more episodes, then there's a place where you can subscribe to the podcast. And if you subscribe, then it brings up a kind of a pseudo player or app, at which point you have the ability to add a podcast shortcut to your home screen. So that is a good thing. So this is a nicer way for some Android users to get it. It's not a native app and, and it's important to point it out, but it is a native way for podcasts to be discovered in Android. And that is super, super important. So before we get into a little bit more, why don't Elsie read a question we got from Justin? So we have a question okay. here. So let's go into that. Here's a question from Justin. Good generic time of the day, Elsie and Rob, regarding putting your feed URL on your homepage for Google, would having your Libsyn custom player on your homepage count since that has a button for the RSS feed? Thanks, Justin. All right. So the answer to that is no, no, and no. Um, <laughs> for Google to work, you need to have a link to your RSS feed embedded into the site. We've always recommended you have a link on your site to your RSS feed. This is something I've always had on all my sites, and that was the right call, according to Google. But the player alone will not do it, nor will a simple button with a link. Um, if you want to call your show a podcast... I said for a long time, you need two things, a valid RSS 2.0 feed and two, your show in the Apple podcast iTunes directory. And now I'm going to amend that item one. I'm going to say you need a valid RSS 2.0 feed with a link to your feed in your website's main page source code. And, and when we and Google say link 
on your homepage. This is what is meant. And, and the following comes directly from Zach at Google. I, I had asked him about this. And he says, quote, a link tag on the podcast home page pointing to the RSS feed. This link we mean is actually different than a link you would just click, which you are probably aware is an A tag, though uh, I, although I agree it's good practice to inform listeners to the RSS URL. So you should still have a button on your website that says, you know, subscribe to R- via RSS or an RSS link. You should still have that. So don't remove that by any way, shape, or form. It doesn't hurt you. Um, the, and the back to the Zacks. This is in the homepage requirements section of our documentation. There's some documentation you can find out there. Um, it should follow this template. Um, and this is the less than symbol, link, space, rel, equal sign, quote, alternate, unquote, type, equals, quote, application slash RSX plus XML, unquote, and then title equals your podcast name, uh, and then href equals your podcast RSS URL. So in a nutshell, and it's, that's the end of Zach's part. So, so here, in a nutshell, if you are using the Lips and blog pages for your website, you're all set. There is nothing you need to do. For example, Podcast 411 site is on Libsyn, and if you go to it and search in the source code, you will find the good link tag that Zach says is required. One thing they say that's important in, in the link is the link in your website. Um, it needs to be to your main page. So the link in your RSS feed, excuse me, the link in your RSS feed, this is all very confusing, so you may want to rewind and listen to this multiple times, probably not at 2x speed today. Um, I want to slow it down to 1x. Uh, again, one thing that they say is important is the link in your RSS feed to your website. This needs to be to your main page where that link tag is located. So make sure in your Libsyn account under settings that your website URL goes exactly where it's supposed to go. Um, There are some people out there singing on social media that if you are not using WordPress for your site, you are SOL. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. If you're using the Libsyn website, we had your back. Actually, some WordPress sites I looked at did not have the tag on their homepage. So they they just had a little button for the RSS feed, but not the real link tag embedded in the, in the source code. If you are not using the Libsyn blog page and are confused, which you probably are at this point, go to your homepage, look at your source code, and search for, quote, link space REL equal sign quotation mark alternate quotation mark, unquote. And if you do not find one with your RSS feed in it, you need to make a change. Right, you can email me, rob at Lipson.com, if you need that exact phrase to search for and what a good tag looks like. Uh, you can also check the show notes. Uh, we'll, we'll try to put in uh, a link and we'll try to put this all in the show notes uh, for you as well. Um, there's a lot of FUD going on about this please send me your questions. I'll be talking to Zach again before we record the next episode of the feed, and I'll present your questions to Zach at Google. Zach said to me, they want people to do this right, and it, and they're, they're very willing to help and make sure you get your show indexed correctly in Google service. It's everybody's best interest for your site to be to be correct. Now, if you're not sure how to check your source code, um, I can tell you how to do it on a Mac. In Safari, go to your website, um, along the top, find develop, click on develop, scroll down, and then look at show page source. Click on that and then do a search in there. That's how you do it on Safari. It will depend on the browser you're using other ones, but that's the one I use. That's the one I can tell you how to look again. Um, oh, and managing your RSS feed on Libsyn is in no way, shape, or form going to hurt you. With this new Google initiative, uh, managing your RSS feed with Libsyn still remains the best and most reliable way to get your show out to the world, period. Elsie, I know this is all very confusing. This is probably one of the segments that people want to re- re- rewind back and and and, Be like, and listen to it the again. Heck? Yeah, um, totally. But it comes down to this. Google is doing something here to help podcasts get discovered. Uh, 
it's native in Android. It's not a native app, but it is native in Android uh, to the search. Uh, and it also helps if you it, beyond Android, it also helps with Google Home. So if you get indexed this way, your podcast also gets um, into Google Home. So, so that's important to note as well. Again, to reiterate, because even while posting this, and I want you, uh, Rob, please help me understand this too, because this has been a question that has come up um, at least two times for me directly. And somebody has commented and said, well, and, and, I'm, and I know we haven't, I'm just bringing this forward just because this has happened. Well, Google Play Music is not available outside of the U.S., this or, is not related it, to Google Play exactly. Music in any way, shape, or form. Yes, correct. Yeah. And Just also, because your podcast is in Google Play Music does not mean it's in this. Yeah, so that's question number one answered. Question number two, people keep looking at the computers. So they're looking at a computer, mm -hmm. and they're looking for the results. And again, and they're also their iPhones. So they're looking at their computer or their iPhones, and they say, I can't find this. So looking in Chrome on your computer is not going to find this. It has to be on an Android device and it has to be on version 6.5 or, or later, which again covers like 90% of the search results out there um, that are from via Android. So version 6.5 or later on Android, searching in Google Chrome, you'll get this. All right. And the last thing that has come up is that I can't find it. I'm not in the United States. This is global. Yes. Great. All right. This is global. So I want you guys to note all of these things. And if for some reason you're on an Android device and you happen to be um, thinking it's this, and again, this is not an app. So I don't want you to open your, your um, you know, Android device or whatever and immediately go searching for podcast app or Google podcasts. You don't have to do that. You just have to open your Android device, and you can go inside the Google search app, the app that's in there. That's where it is. And also, they Rob just mentioned Chrome. So if you have Chrome in your Android, just search like you would, like whatever, for whatever. And it, it, it should work there. The only time, at least of now, there are, obviously there are some versions, again, that are not being supported, but most of them are, as Rob mentioned. And the other thing is that if your show or let's say you're searching for somebody else's show and it's not giving you the results that you've seen in the pictures, then there's there's a little misfire in terms of this coding or this specific code that we are sharing with you there, which is why we wanted you to check it. So take a moment to either look at the show notes. I'm going to try to add that code there, of course, so that you guys can check it out. You can even look at it now. And just like Rob said, there are ways to search for that, uh, for that code itself. The browsers, I think almost every browser supports the ability to search people's code. Um, I know that I've done it in the past. And so go ahead and, and, and kind of Google that and then update it. And it should work because I just actually saw a screenshot from a listener in Mexico um, that sent a screenshot where he it, it's showing up. So okay. there you have it. Yeah. Right. And, and by the way, for Google versions, uh, you may also know them as Marshmallow, Nougat and Oreo are the versions that are supported. Oh my goodness. That sounds very crazy. Oh, yes. It really, really makes my mouth water since I haven't eaten in five oh my, days. Oh my God. You're so nuts. <laughs> All right. So you know what we didn't mention though, guys, and, and I, I did mention this at the beginning of the episode, but I, what I didn't tell you guys is that I'm not on mic myself on purpose again. It's not that I haven't picked my mic. I am using the Google, the Google, the Apple earbuds in my ears. And because I just didn't have a microphone available to me because I'm in a different location. So I just wanted to note that. So my, um, microphone is, I am not on mic today, not on proper and, and, fancy mic on purpose. And, and I'm going to, I'll make this recommendation to folks that I've said before, um, for iOS, for people that have iOS devices, when they need to search, um, go to Best Buy, find an Android device that's working on a display or a store where they where they sell Android devices and go into the device and, and, you know, you find one that's got an internet connection and do a search for your, for your podcast title and see if it shows up. Or, or find one of your friends that, that's not hip and ask them to look at their Android device. And I've been asking because I also don't have one, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, so 
Shall we continue? Yes. Um, all right. Uh, here we go. G-G-T-O-T-D, Elsie and Rob. Sorry to bother you. I was just in settings trying to set custom defaults for the Lipson player, and I can't see where I can do it. Currently, when I publish an episode and go to grab the player embed code from my website, it defaults to with 640 pixels and a height of 260 pixels. Then you have your choice of player themes, which defaults to legacy. Every time I grab the embed code, I have to change it to my preferences. The width is 360 by pixels and the height is 360 pixels because I like a nice square, neat player that fits my logo size exactly. And then select the standard mini player theme. It'll be handy to be able to set my preferences as a default. Have I just not found a spot where I can do this? Or is it not an option? And if it's not an option, is this something perhaps you would consider introducing? Many, many thanks as always. Keep up the good work. And this is from Dan from the Brand Newsroom podcast. And um, so I responded with this link and he was very happy. It's, uh, it says, it's actually the title of a support article called HTML5 Show Player. And he was really, really happy with the response. He said this is what he was looking for. So, yeah. In yes. short, the answer is yes, you yes. can do this. <laughs> yes. and, and you, and you go to, uh, destinations and you edit the player in destinations. So you find the player there in destinations and set up your default settings there. Yeah, so then he skips all that stuff. And then, um, and Dan, um, I did give your love to the baby goats, to all the goats for you. So that's good. <laughs> okay. There's one thing I want to point out about our player, and, and people wonder, you know, should you use the lips and player or not? And our player is designed different than almost any other player out there um, in that it will block rogue browsers from preloading. There are most players will put in uh, do not preload. You can have an instruction there, do not preload. But there are many browsers that ignore that and go ahead and preload the file anyway. Our browser gets around that. We actually don't make the URL available until someone hits the play button. So if you are using a browser other than the Libsyn browser and you're seeing spikes on your, your downloads and you're not sure if they're real or not, replace the player with our player. And see if that makes a difference. Because our player, you literally, the, the end user has to hit the play button before our player will go and fetch the URL in the media file. So there is no URL in our player. If you go and look at the source code with our player embedded on your site, you will see there is no URL there. But the other players out there all have to put that in. We actually can do a server-side call. So if you're hosting with us, um, that's an advantage from our player over other players. It's going to give you a much more realistic number of your audience, especially if you have a very popular website or if you see a lot of spike in your traffic and you're getting uh, uh, you know, uh unknown stuff and, and a lot of browser hits to your uh, your downloads. If, if you see Sapphire, or Firefox, really it's going to usually be Mozilla or Chrome or Microsoft Explorer. If you see them at the top, go ahead and swap out your current player with the Libsyn player and see what it does to your numbers. Yeah, I had a I had a little conversation, not a little conversation. I don't know if it's counted as a conversation um, on Twitter with uh, Player FM because <laughs> I do a lot of you know, I do a lot of curation. I do a lot of research online almost every day where I'm looking for headlines and news and behaviors and whatever that's coming up. Right. And so there's been many times when there's been a relevant headline that I kind of want to just go check out to see if the, if there is any information that is important. Right. And I click through and a lot of the time I end up on sort of like the player FM web player area. Like, so it's like, you know, a page, where there's a podcast that is, has a page there, right? Cause there's, there's stuff like that that happens. But the problem with the player FM stuff is that it automatically loads. It automatically loads and starts playing loudly. I was at the library yesterday, um, doing research and I clicked through and, and it just started playing loudly. I was mortified. And so then I immediately was so mad. <laughs> I, 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 this is what I texted back to them. I said, dear player FM, why do you have auto playing players? It's simply not okay to do that. One example, I'm at the library researching and curating podcasting content. I clicked on the player FM, you know, and I gave it the link and immediately started playing loudly. As mentioned, I'm at the library. Is that a setting by the producer every using the player FM page? I mean, with progressive downloads, every time someone goes on that page, they're essentially getting a download, which means these mm -hmm. poor podcasters are thinking their show is getting some play when it's really not. 
really angry face. And this is not the first time. I instantly know it's a Player FM site when something in the background is playing without my permission, which for me, someone that has essentially zero bandwidth absolutely matters. And this is what the response was. Hi, Elsie. It's normal behavior of our web app that the episode auto plays when you access its page. There's currently no option to disable this, but we've taken your concern as a suggestion. By the way, boo hiss. I know. And we'll have it considered in future updates. Cheers. So, you know. So basically they told you to go away. Yeah. I'm going to be using nice terminology there. Go away. You're bugging bugging us. Well, we'll consider it for a few. We'll we'll, we'll consider it. Wow. But the fact that they have that consider it normal. Just as it says, they're clueless. Exactly. Sorry. And so that's what I'm saying. It's like, even with that, I'm not sure what that looks like. Coming back to your conversation, I'm not sure what that looks like, let's say, on, on our lips and stats, because they, obviously it's not a, ho- they're not a host. And what they tend well, to that do. Would, you know, player FM's numbers, they're about half a percent. No, but what I'm saying is like, this is the web player. This is not, this is not an app because there's a B- player FM app as well. So I'm not sure if it's showing as a browser. Oh, it'll That's show as I'm a browser. Saying. Exactly. Yeah. In, in That's that case, what I'm saying. Show, yeah, in that case, it'll show as Safari, Firefox, Mozilla. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. We don't know. And then, so there's people who maybe are promoting their Player FM stuff. And, and here's the reason why this concerns me for them is that it comes up a lot on search results. It has a lot of juice within like whatever the five, the, you know, the Google spiders out there. And so... I am, let's say there's a head, I've found Daniel Lewis's show in there a lot because I do searches based obviously on keywords. I've seen Dan, um, Dave's show come up there a lot where it's an older headline for past episodes that are relevant still. And then I go, Oh, I wonder who's covering this, this, right? And then I click through and I'm thinking I'm going onto somebody's website and I go into the player FM site and it auto plays. So it's like, I'm just, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. So anyway, I just want to tell you guys that, that that's there. And unfortunately, I'm not even sure if you can opt out of it. I think that they're just sucking people's RSS feeds in there. Well, so. you can't, yeah, I don't know if you can, but here's the simple thing. Don't go and promote their player. Don't use their player. So yeah. That, that, I mean, you know, if you're not going to use our player, definitely don't use that one. No, it's not. Um, but I would recommend wherever you can use the Lipson player. Like, again, yes. ours Unlike any other that I know of, um, you actually have to hit the play button before the URL is 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 called. So there's no way for browsers to preload it, even when you know rogue players. And it now there is an option in our player, of course, like any other, where you can have it set to autoplay. But that's that's you got to turn that on. It's off by default, mm-hmm. as it should be with any player. It should be off by default. All right, uh, here we go. Another question: G G T O T D. I'd like to use some audio clips from a sports broadcast. Any advice on where to start as I try to figure out who can give me proper permission and how much it will cost? I'm sure it varies based on the company who owns the rights to the broadcast, but not sure where to begin on this one. Or maybe you know someone who has licensed such clips before and could give me a rough estimate of how much something like this will cost. Thanks. As always, I really appreciate all the continued wisdom that you both provide on the feed. Scott, and this is from the Warriors Huddle Podcast. Okay, so Scott, as you may have heard during a broadcast of an NBA game or other professional broadcasts, quote, any rebroadcast, reproduction, or use other use of this telecast without the express written consent of league name here is strictly prohibited, unquote. So simply put, you need to get written permission from the NBA to use any of the game telecasts on your show. You might start with contact.nba.com. Uh, and from there, Google for their press relations office person, a search in LinkedIn for press relations NBA and, and, well, put some elbow grease into it and you may find the right person. Uh, that said, we'll send a call out if anybody does know or has done this where they've contacted one of the major professional sports leagues. Let us know, you know, give us a call, or shoot us an email uh, and let us know how you did it, who you went through and if you had to pay and what it is. Um, now, when you do find the right person, Scott, I, I'd recommend this. Um, explain your show and how you want to use the content. You should ask for a yearly license if, the, if, there's a, if they give out such a license to use the content. That way you can cover the whole NBA season. And hopefully they will grant it at no cost, but you never know. Uh, from what I hear, the NBA of all the three major sports is the best one to work with. 
the NFL is the worst. So uh, good luck with that. Yeah, the NFL actually went after churches for having Super Bowl parties. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The No Fun Jeez. League. That's why it's the called no the No Fun, fun League. Um, oh, my gosh. That's awful. All right. Well, um, good luck. Let us know what happens, too. Let us know if you, like, you know, get an opportunity to have that discussion with somebody. But um, thanks for asking the question. Okay, so this is a great time to hear from our second promo of this episode, The Corner Office. I'm Amy Engelman. Join me on The Corner Office podcast and take a look under the hood of some of the most innovative businesses and the people who make it happen. We dive into the global resourcing phenomena that is happening right now. It's all the things I wish I knew before starting to outsource offshore. So join me on The Corner Office podcast. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Folks, for sending that in. All right. Uh, here we go. Hi, Elsie and Rob. I was taking a look at Rob's hardware recording solution over at podcast411.com slash mixer.pdf. And I wanted to ask if it could work and still have some the same audio quality to bypass the mixer and have line in straight to a Zoom H6. Thanks, Lillian. Yes. If you are using a laptop that has a built in mic, then there's no reason to need uh, for the mixer at all. You can take your audio straight from the mic right into the Zoom H6 and the audio from the computer um, from the other person that's talking the out the audio out of the computer right into the Zoom H6 on the other channel. And then you listen to the audio um, out of the H6. The person you are talking to can hear you via the mic on your laptop. So, yes, absolutely. And someday when I get some time, <laughs> I'm going to actually update my PDF to have both options and some explanations of both. Oh, my gosh. I would love that. Just for me, Rob. Do it for me. I know. I, it actually, <laughs> I, I actually have a in one presentation, I actually did update the screen. So I really do need to do that and get it in there and show it. But it, yes, you can do that with just the H6, but you, your laptop needs to have a mic. And then the person that's listening to you listens via the mic on your, you know, the whole reason for the mixer in the past was I had a laptop that didn't have, I had a, a desktop that didn't have a mic. Um, and then you use the mixer to split the audio and one goes to the, the computer and the other one to the, the mixer. So you can get rid of the the preamp, I should say, I was using a preamp and then the mixer, but, and then I brought it out to the digital recorder, but yes, you can do everything, get rid of the mixer, get rid of the preamp and do it all boom, right with the zoom H six and a laptop, um, and, and use the mic on the laptop. So yes, it can make it simpler. Now she also came back and she found, oh, yes, uh, yes, yeah, so she, she does. She has more. So stuff. There's another way. There's even a third way to do this. So let's, I know. let's confuse people a little bit more so here. <laughs> All right. Hi, Elsie and Rob. Oh, so this is from Lillian again, guys. So yes. hi, Elsie and Rob. In a previous email, I asked about Rob's hardware solution for recording Skype. I wanted to know if I could record straight into an H6 or other recorder without using a mixer. Since then, I found an awesome solution, which Elsie, you might appreciate since it uses an ATR2100 on YouTube. And so there's a link and I'm going to put the video, you guys, in the show notes as always. Basically, you just need an ATR2100 or an AT you know, whatever, two, 2005 or a Sam Q2U or any other mic that can simultaneously use both an XLR and a USB cable, a recorder, for example, on H6, H5, etc. That has multiple inputs that can take both XLR and one quarter inch inputs and one eighth inch to one quarter inch cable. I just tried this today to record a Skype test call and it works. Best Lillian. That's awesome. Very right. cool. And thanks, Lillian, for that solution that will work if your computer does not have a mic. So if your computer doesn't have a mic, then go with what Lillian said. If your computer does have a mic, it's even simpler. Just your mic that you're going to talk to that you want the good quality, you put into the Zoom H6. The mic on the laptop is what the person hears. The person that's hearing you doesn't have to hear you at the best audio quality, right? It doesn't matter because the recording is what matters because it's about your audience. Uh, and, and then you take the audio out of the computer right into the Zoom on the other channel and you can monitor the levels and, and adjust the gain on the H6 so that you guys are matched up pretty close. And, and again, monitor it listening through the H6. And yes, I really do need to update my PDF because with Skype apocalypse coming in the future, um, with like call recorder when it's no longer supported, um, people are going to need 
other ways to record. Right. Well, well, good. I mean, you, if you guys have any other setups, <laughs> why don't we, why don't we keep adding to the mix, Rob? I think that would be great. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So we have a little bit of audio feedback here and this is, um, from Go Legal Yourself. Hello, Rob and Elsie. Good generic time of the day. It's Kelly Bagler with Go Legal Yourself. I just wanted to give you a huge shout out just to say thank you so much for mentioning my, my app. And also for um, saying that my design was absolutely wonderful. I do also want to give Libsyn a huge thank you for um, designing the app. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it and I will continue listening to your podcast. Again, this is Kelly Bagler, the queen of business law. I am with Go Legal Yourself. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye. Well, Kelly, you are... So very welcome um, for the help with your app. And thank you for hosting with Libsyn and and wanting to get the app built. And really, I do love your business card design. It's kind of a thing for me. And, you know, I'm going to go off topic. I don't have any notes here, but I wanted to talk about this. Podcast Movement's coming up, folks. Uh, We put out a lot of business cards at Podcast Movement. Um, If you are not going to go there, um, you should send me your cards. But think about the design of your cards. I see some really bad cards. I mean, some I didn't even put out at NAB because you looked at the card. You had no idea what the show was about. Um, or worse yet, somebody would give me the card. Oh, here's a card for my, my podcast. And it just gives their name. It doesn't even say their podcast on it. Here's what you need to do. Drop the card on the floor that you designed. You know, design it, print it out, get it to the right size, whatever you're going to do. Drop it on the floor and look down at it, at your feet, standing up. And if you're standing up and you can look down at that card and you know what your show is about, you've done a good design for your business card. If you look down at it and you're squinting and trying to figure out what all that small print is and, and have no idea what the card, what the show is about, that's a bad design. So design your card so when someone quickly glances at it, they know what your show is about. Kelly did that. Her card was beautiful. Instantly, you know what it's about. Trek Geeks, perfect card. People walk by the booth all the time. Star Trek fans, boom, they pick it up. They know that's a Star Trek card. They know it. Make your car design a promotional vehicle when people are walking by and quickly glance at it. That's what you need to do. Think about that. And then when you're ready, email me, rob at Lipson.com. I will send you my snail mail address where you can mail your cards to me if you're not going to Podcast Movement. If you are going, bring them. Do not send them to me and then show up. Oh, thank you for bringing my cards. No, that is on you to carry your cards, okay? So leave them. You can leave them there and we'll take them to the next show. But I've had people do that to me before. They mail them to me and they go, okay, see you. I'll see you at the show. I'm like, what? Why did you send them to me if you're going to see me at the show? Bring them and set them out. And, 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 when, and, that, and on top of that, I always put better placement. If you come to the show and leave your cards, I'll try to give you better placement. That, so. That's good. I know that'll be that'll be a catch, guys. No, yeah, don't make them carry it. That's not good. That's not good. Yeah, if you come, if you send them to me and say, "Hey, I look forward to seeing you at the show," they're going to be on the top back row. Yeah, they going to be like, "Oh, okay, that's <laughs> the way you're going to be." <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to add a little bit of information here, Rob, that is not on the, on the, mm-hmm. on the show notes here, just because I, I just got an email and I forgot to kind of put this in the show notes, but, um, there has been a little bit of a, some talk around the industry around Twitter, uh, in the past, I think yesterday it started. So I would say two days from when you guys hear this and there has been like a little bit of a security breach breach from oh. Twitter. <laughs> A little? <laughs> a little, <laughs> yes. And so they're asking most places to, or I mean, most accounts to change your password. They are sending emails, but just in case you ha- it goes into spam or something, um, they are requesting it. And it, it, they're saying this, look at the language. It's really interesting. They say, um, you know, we recently identified a bug that stored passwords unmasked in an internal log. We have fixed the bug and our investigation shows no indication of breach or misuse by anyone. Out of an abundance of caution, we ask you that you consider changing your password on all services where you've used this password. You can change your Twitter password at any time, and then it just asks you to do that. So if you guys have not done so already, please go change your Twitter password. The end. So, um, yeah. Anyway, let's continue with more news. And this is from, this is actually a, a, a link from The Verge, although it's also available inside of the Shifty, Ye- just Shifty Jelly website as well. And I'll put that link below here as well. So what's been going on with Shifty Jelly po- Pocket Casts? 
Okay, so they have been acquired by a collective group that includes NPR, WNYC, WBEZ, and This American Life. And there goes the indie podcasters getting any love on that app. Um, oh. It, it is said, uh, well, we'll see. It is said going forward, Pocket Cast will operate as a joint venture between the new owners and that Philip Simpson and Russell Ivanovich, um, the founders of Shifty Jelly, who developed Pocket Cast, will quote uh, will have a quote unspecified leadership roles unquote. <laughs> um, the new CEO of the company is Owen Grober, who was with iHeartRadio and Clear Channel. You know Owen; he's hanging out with us at Podcast Movement and Podfest and Podcamps. Oh, oh maybe come not. on, Rob, yeah. you're so he's bad. <laughs> never been to any of those. Uh, yeah, I have a bad feeling about this. <sighs> um, the acquisition was about rad. Uh, remote audio data, and being able to get a popular app to implement it. Problem is, it's just 2% of the marketplace. And depending on what they do to that app, once they have it, that 2% may soon be a memory. I have to imagine Marco over, uh, Overcast is pretty happy at the news. And actually, Marco took the high, high road and said, quote, there are a lot of good people involved. I wish them well. Beyond that, I don't think it involves or affects me, unquote. And that was what he had put up on Twitter about it. Um, yeah, I'll buy that for a dollar, Marco. Like I said, I'm sure he is happy. Indie app competitor purchased by joint venture of public radio folks and CEO inserted from iHeartRadio. Culture shock is coming. And again, I have a bad feeling about this. Hope I'm wrong. But if not, Overcast and Podcast Attic will likely be the big winners. Let's see a year from now where the percentages are for downloads of those three apps. I would wager Pocket Cast is lower and the other two are higher. In the uh, Shifty Jelly blog, you know, they, they wrote specifically and they addressed some things that, you know, I know I hear you, Rob. I totally hear you. I understand. That was my first reaction. And I, I'm a little, uh, I have hope. I have hope, um, especially when they mention that there's been other times that this has happened, but it was because of the compilation of all of these coming to them. And then they said, quote, everything from their non, not for profit mission focus to their unwavering belief that open and collaborative wins over closed wall gardens resonated deeply with us, um, end quote. And it was interesting when they mentioned that, because for me, I feel um, that the majority of the stuff that uh, the NPR folks and all those guys have been doing has actually been creating walled gardens. Mm -hmm. So I was like, OK, so maybe what does that mean? <laughs> like, I got a little confused, but then I'm a little bit optimistic. So I'm thinking, have they changed their approach? Are they thinking like now we can just expand into this and 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 make this happen? Right. Because f at least from what I understood before, it was all walled gardens. It's like the, the NPR one app. You have to listen mm -hmm. here. And then there's this other app here and you got to listen there. And then there's, you know, all of the windowing techniques that people are employing and all, all of the premium content that comes through these things. So I hope my you know, hope is that they El stay El open. Elsie, yes, I was going <laughs> to argue with you about your hope, but you seem to have argued with yourself just perfectly. I know. <laughs> oh god <laughs> i know i was trying not to be like no uh, I, I just I, i'm sorry i just don't see how this is going to work out well in the end for indie podcasters on on the app i just don't see it um maybe i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong and we'll find out a year from now <laughs> uh, you know yes, how you're things right. worked out. You're right. But you're, uh, you're right. And I, I kind of want to take a screenshot of their of this app. You guys, you have to go to their to their specific blog post because they have all these FAQs at the bottom, and like the and they their FAQs are fantastic because they say, "Oh my God, are you abandoning us? Oh my God, are you totally going to ruin the app and make us hate you? Oh my God, is this going to be a public radio app now? Oh my God, I just paid for this yesterday." <laughs> So all of these are answered. Uh, I mean, there's all all kinds of, oh, my God. Uh, you guys go ahead and check it out. And, uh, you know, I, I don't I, I it's just one of those things where I'm thinking like, oh, I just hope I hope everything's OK, because I've never really used Pocket Cast just because I have my other loves and I just can't let them go. But I do. I have heard wonderful things. You know? Oh, it's a wonderful app. It's a question is, will it be a wonderful app a year from now? That's that's the real question. You know, what are they going to do 
with regards to the RAD implementation? What are they going to do as far as featuring of shows? You know, are they going to skew it to their show, just the public radio shows that really get the, the feature love over other stuff? What are they going to do? And, and, and the fact that they inserted someone that came from iHeartRadio, I don't know the guy. I'm sure he's great. But the fact is, I don't know the guy. And I've been to every podcast event there is, pretty much. Elsie, do you know the guy? Anybody know the guy? Nobody knows the guy. He hasn't been to any podcasting events that I know of. Um, so so the CEO is somebody that's not from the space. And he doesn't know podcasting. Um, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, all the best, dudes. Because I also support, and see, here's the other thing too. I really support indie developers. I think that, I mean, there's, they just do such great work out there and are often overlooked. Most of the time we just take, take, take and never give anything back. And I think that Shifty Jelly has given a lot to the space. You know, those guys have done a lot of work and I just hope that that doesn't go away because they deserve they deserve the, the, you know, they deserve the, 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 the goodness that comes from creating an app that merits being acquired. Mm-hmm. So anyway, and they've, and they've been doing it a long time. I mean, they yeah, started they work have. on that app back in 2008. So, I mean, kudos to the guys. They've done a great job and I'm not in an end in my comments here in no way, shape or form is anything that's in the past that's, that's happened with yeah. Shifty Jelly. The question is what's going to happen going forward. And, exactly. and, and yeah, and that's, where my concerns are. We'll see uh, if my negativity is warranted or um, was accurate. On to some Spotify news. Oh, yay. Uh, you know how we said Spotify would have a delay in adding new shows for four to six weeks? Um, yeah, that now means no new shows added until sometime in early June. They, again, are reworking their back end and need to pause new additions until then. But luckily, if you're listening to this show... You already submitted your show to Spotify, right? So really, it's only big news for those that don't listen to the show. Right. However, on the small news front, they did say new episodes might be delayed in showing up. So might be one to three days for new episodes to show up in some time cases. Um, that said, the shows I checked this week all looked up to date. And sorry, guys, because I've seen a lot of pain from some of y'all out there. Sorry. And we have some news because Apple Podcast has passed the 50 billion episode served mark recently. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. So congrats to Apple for that. And, and thanks for all you do for podcasting. You know, Apple still doesn't get enough credit. Apple has done more for podcasting space than anyone else. Um, and I should say Apple Podcasts slash and iTunes. I don't like when I say the iTunes part, but but both um, have really, you know, taken podcasting to the next level and, and to this level where we're at now. And it wasn't for Apple. We would not be anywhere near where we are. So thank you, Apple, for everything you've done and continue to do in this space. And they are still the dominant force in here. Now, that said, Libsyn is somewhere north of 25 billion downloads in our history, just to put things in perspective. And no one else that I know of is even over 12.5 billion downloads. Sort of just saying. Mm, so Many downloads. <laughs> Yes. Um, Trader Joe's is getting into podcasting. <laughs> Woo-hoo, my favorite store. Um, <laughs> they just launched a podcast series. Uh, it's called Trader Joe's Insider. Uh, um, and kudos to them. And it has actually been very successful early on. They cracked the top three overall on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, in the first 24 hours. And they remained in the top 10 for a few days. They've been in the top 10 for a few days now. Um, yes, they're hosting with Libsyn. And, and well, it's also the place my wife and I do a lot of our shopping at. And it is nice to see them embrace podcasting and then promote their podcasting in their fearless flyer via their site. And most importantly, in their email list. That's so cool. they've done it right on the promotion side. Their artwork, perfect. If you go and look, find uh, Trader, just search for Trader Joe's on iTunes, you'll see, uh, or Apple Podcasts, you will see um their, their artwork is beautiful. It's simple. It's exactly what Apple wants. Apple hasn't even featured them yet, and, and they're already in the top. So they've, done, they've gotten to where they've gotten with their own promotion, mm-hmm. and they did it the right way. Great. And, and they promoted with their audience. And, and the best part is their audience responded. You know, the people that shop at Trader Joe's have responded and gone in and subscribed and listened to the podcast. Now, it's a limited series right now with five episodes. They want to see how well it does before they expand on that. Um, but you can go in if you're a Trader Joe's fan like me. And, and um, you know, yesterday the wife came home with like 
eight bags from Trader Joe's. Oh my I was like, I can't eat right now. <laughs> yeah. For Wait. those that don't know, I'm on a five day fast. So I'm at the end of my five day fast. So last night the wife walks home with all this great food from Trader Joe's. I'm like, uh, <laughs> Okay, so wait, I have a question for you. So they're doing all this stuff. Have you gone into Trader Joe's and had a conversation with one of the guys about the podcast? I've talked with their team. Yeah. I, I, I mean, inside yeah, yeah. the store. Oh, I haven't gone into a store okay. and talked with them about it yeah, yet. No. Because, see, that's what I noticed the difference was between, you, I don't know if you knew, maybe maybe you didn't, but Starbucks put out a series of um, podcast episodes, like I would say about a year or something ago. Um, and they were really, I mean, they were, they had a lot of push on social media. Um, you know, I saw, I saw a lot of like write-ups about it. And then I went and I was like, I wonder if these guys know about this. So then I went inside of a Starbucks and I looked around and I didn't see anything promoting the podcast everywhere, anywhere. And I was like, Hey guys, like, you know, whoever the guys in the counter. And I was like, do you guys know you all have a podcast? And they looked at me like I was crazy. So, you know what? I forgot to ask my wife to grab the fearless flyer yesterday. So okay. I wish I had grabbed that, but I, I did see it mentioned on, on the online version of it. Um, and, and so I need to get, I need to get there this weekend um, and grab the fearless flyer. So you can see where it's at in the flyer itself. And, and yeah, I'll ask someone at, at, at Trader Joe's if they know anything about it, but I've been talking to the folks at Trader Joe's that are running it, but I haven't gone my mom. It only launched by the way uh, on the 1st of, of May. Okay, so cool. just launched a few days ago. So I haven't been into a Trader Joe's since then. my wife went yesterday. Right. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying just because I was thinking like, what a great, cause you know, word of mouth marketing <laughs> is the best mm-hmm. to have one of the team members just mention it off the cuff or like be able to answer questions. Right. Cause that's what I, I actually was looking for that. I was looking for, oh yeah, I listened to the show. It's about this. And then, you know, but I was like, I was like, you guys at Starbucks, I'm thinking, goodness gracious, you, you all have those little things to get a free app and free music on the, you know, when you go get your sugar stuff, like how about promoting your own podcast there? That would have been great. <laughs> like I was just looking at all the in-store possibilities that they could have done and they didn't. So Star- Starbucks history with podcasting has been pretty marred. Yeah. I mean, they had, they had the worst corporate podcast of all time. Oh, the original they? one. Yeah. The original one was so, so bad. It was panned. If you actually Google Starbucks podcast, uh, worst, worst pa- or bad podcast, you could probably find some articles from it back in like 2008 time frame. It was just really, really bad. I mean, they were slurping and coffee oh, and gosh. spitting it into a platoon. I use it in presentations I give still to this day as an example of the worst podcast ever. Oh, um, goodness gracious. Yeah, it was really bad. They totally missed the mark on the, on the medium. Whoa. And, Whoa. and, and the marketing company that, that was their marketing company got fired because of it. So, Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. This one was actually quite a, I mean, it was very well thought out. That's why I thought, wouldn't you want to tell your people about it? You've done such a wonderful job with the show. So, okay. Let's uh, continue on to (laughs) even better conversations about (laughs) more people spamming podcasters. How about that? Yes. Wondery proved they are not against spamming podcasters of the past couple weeks. You probably saw the email blast that they were saying they were interested in advertising on your show for a new podcast. And then they ask you to give info on your show and your numbers in a Google form. They appear to just be trying to get your info and recruit your show. They did not personally reach out. They just scraped your emails from your feed, run away, run away. Um, although it was also good, it was a good way for them to promote a show and tell a bunch of podcasters um, that they want to advertise that show on your show. And many would click that link to check it out. So smart, yes, swarmy, but very, very swarmy. Uh, but again, smart. So I... Kind you're of confused. an evil genius, yeah, kind confused. of an evil genius thing that they did, but swarmy nonetheless. <laughs> um, you know my feeling about companies that scrape RSS feeds. I hate them. Uh, Pippa is another one that is really, really, in my opinion, the swarmiest of the swarmies when it comes to this. They are so bad at it. They just plain and simple appear to be desperate. Tick tock, tick tock goes the clock on when they close, or it appears by their actions. Just saying. Um, if you get one of these emails, mark it as spam and reply back to them saying, stop spamming me. Call them out. Maybe they will get it and that they're being swarmy or not. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Here we go. 
on um good news now good news good yeah. news oh my gosh the bbc just released 16,000 sound effects what yes so so from the bbc quote these 16,000 bbc sound effects are made available by the bbc in wave format to download for use under the terms of the ram arc license the sound effects are BBC copyright, but they may be used for personal, educational, or research purposes as detailed in the license, unquote. I'll have a link uh, in the show notes, but if you can't find what you're looking for at freesound.org, which is what I always use for my sound effects, then maybe this is the next best place to look. Thank you, BBC, for this incredible resource. Um, again, read the license. Make sure it's okay for your show. Um, but it's just nice to see these all these sound effects BBC made public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have another email. Hi, Elsie and Rob. I'm about a year into podcasting and have nearly 50 episodes completed. My podcast is called Name Redacted, which is the tagline for my company. <laughs> I'm wondering what the potential damage is if I change my show name to slightly different Name Redacted. My content will be the same. The artwork would only need to be slightly tweaked. I can keep the image, but just change the text. And I think I could even keep my podcast current website with the same URL. But I think the new name would come up better in Apple Podcasts slash iTunes searches, and I wouldn't have to explain what the podcast is about. It would just make sense. I don't want to com completely relaunch the podcast as I'm slowly sure, but surely building my audience, and I don't want to lose what I've built. Is there a way to change it without losing what I've I've already done. I appreciate your thoughts. Regards, Beth W. And hi, Beth. There are no, none, not a zip issues at all with changing your show's title. Just go into your Lipson account, go to settings, and change your show title and artwork there. Click save, and you're done. Changes will show up on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes in about 24 to 70, 72 hours, if not sooner. You can change your title and artwork at any time. And as often as you like, it will not negatively impact you in the Apple Podcast iTunes search. And, and by just changing it there and not changing to a new feed, not getting a new account, not doing all these other dumb things that some people have done, I've heard people do, because it really is dumb. Because if you do change that and you get a new iTunes page and resubmit, you lose all your search juice. Because remember, search is based on the total number of subscribers all time. That's how they sort search results. So... Just change your title, your artwork, and your iTunes, lips and account. Click save, and then Apple Podcasts iTunes will update in, in less than 72 hours and usually less than 24. That's it. And, and I, I have known of some podcasts that cover pop culture. They would change their title slightly every week to mention whatever was the hip new thing that was being searched on in pop culture. <laughs> hmm. So constantly changing it just to optimize based on what people should be, would be searching about. Now, they're not misleading people because they really are covering pop culture and they're probably talking about that. So they actually changed the title of their podcast to match up with kind of what they were going to be talking about. Oh gosh. I'm glad that you went into this because I do get a lot of questions. Um, we often get a lot of questions about, about that and, um, you know, that, which aligns with the other relevant question where people say like, do I need to change my show slug if I'm changing mm -hmm. the title of the episode oh, or I'm no, sorry, the show and stuff yeah. like that's yeah. the don't, other, don't yeah. do that. Just change it. Just change your title. Change. Now there are a couple services out there that you can't change your title. When you sign up for an account with certain services out there, you're stuck with that title forever. We're not like that. Never have been. And you should run away, run away from any service that doesn't let you update your title at any given time. And kind of keep, uh, like keep keeping up with a little bit of, of the things that we've been updating here uh, lately, we have a support blog post all about the GDPR stuff that's been happening all over the Internet. I'm sure that you have gotten tons of like <laughs> updated privacy policies. So we have a blog post that um, and uh, I believe you guys are going to be getting an email on Monday. Mm -hmm. So this hasn't gone through yet, but we are just letting you know there's going to be a link in the show notes for this information. But do you want to share a little more, uh, Rob? Yeah, so this month there's a few things that will be coming. An updated lips in terms of service, updated privacy policy, additional information on data transparency, changes to user consent, which may affect how you sign up or opt into services, lips in dashboard alerts, um, and then further email communication. So um, you have no doubt, again, been seeing other services that you use have similar changes, updates, especially around the terms of services. What does this mean for you? Most likely nothing. 
other than having to accept new terms of services with us and a plethora of other services that you've already had to do that with. Uh, I'm sure there are some services hit very hard, but if you took privacy seriously before all of this, there's not much you needed to be changed or updated um, from you know a provider's point of view. There's services out there that absolutely will be shut down. Um, before the 25th because they were stalking IP addresses and reporting back information and all kinds of stuff. But if the company, you know, the service you're working with took privacy seriously, it's really not going to be any really impact on you. Right. Did you see, um, actually, Mark Arment, um, he just updated the privacy update over in Overcast 4.2. Uh, he released this just a little bit like last week and whatnot. So you guys can check out his take on it in terms of the way that what he's doing um, for podcasters or what his actually for listeners, really, because he, he's really one of those big fans of uh, supporting the listeners. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I really uh, appreciate his take on there. I'll put a link in the show notes as well so that you guys can kind of like read his take on this stuff. I just really love his leadership, you know, and he just stands by what he believes and um, he follows through. So good on you, Marco, as always. Thank you so much. So I'll put a, I'll put that link in there. Before we get to our wonderful stats for the episode, we have our third promo of the episode, and it's chasing ghosts on scooters in bars. <laughs> chasing ghosts on scooters in bars. We blend the modern scooter lifestyle with a twist of the paranormal over a cool cocktail. Join our gaggle of dangerous Vespa scooter riders searching for dive bars, haunted taverns, and classic pubs. Where else can you find a podcast that engages your mind, the spirit, and your liver? And now we're the number one scooter, ghost, and bar podcast in the world. Aren't we the only one? Well, you can find us everywhere. Thanks. Thanks for sending that over. (laughs) All right. Okay. Okay. Now. Let us now get into the median and mean numbers, see how your show measures up. The median and mean numbers are based on episodes released in the month of March with downloads measured until the end of April. On average, each file was about 45 days old. The median numbers for March was up to 144. Uh, That's up slightly above the 138 in February. The adjusted mean average, where I throw out the top half percent and any files with three or less downloads, the adjusted mean was 1,479, up from February when it was 1,432. And this is back to normal seasonal increase for this time of year. And we should see, again, slightly higher numbers for, I'd say, the next two months before we hit the summers. Uh, 7% of all downloads were in the 5K range or greater for downloads. That is the magical number that some advertisers look for for downloads for campaigns. That 7% result was up a smidge from February 6.9%. And then here are the numbers to measure against and to put things in perspective. If your episodes are getting over 144 downloads after 30 days, you are better than half the shows out there. If they're getting more than 1,200, you're better than 80%. 3,200, you're better than 90%. 8,000, you're better than 95%. 19,000, you're better than 98%. 34,000, and you are better than 99% of the shows out there. All those numbers are for March. Uh, were, at, I would say, expected slightly higher than the February. Um, as some of the new shows from January, February start to kick into gear and start building audience, we start seeing the numbers going back up. So next time, uh, we're going to get into user agents and geographic breakdowns for March. A little preview for user agents. Spotify up again now at 6.1% of all of our downloads. So uh, kudos again to Spotify. Even if they're not adding new shows until June, um, you can still go ahead and fill out your Spotify destination to get in that queue. So when they do open up the floodgates again, uh, you'll be in the top of that queue. And of course, if you're listening to the show, you should already be on Spotify. And if you're not, shame on you, bad marketer, are you? <laughs> yeah. I, well, there's always that one person that doesn't really care about their audience size. And that's okay. You can be that one person. The, you can be, yeah, you can. So there you go. <laughs> so where have we been, Elsie? Um, personally, I, I did uh, a trip uh, right after the last episode, I went to the West Coast uh, visiting a few companies, but nothing I can talk about. Beyond the physical travels, there was a, a virtual travel, and I was on a recent episode of the Flack Pack, which recorded that uh, a couple months ago. So that episode just came out. 
uh, flack pack and it, it's about uh, PR and, and, and marketing. Uh, so it's a good interview to hear. Yep. I had fun doing that one. Awesome. Um, I actually was on two episodes. How about, I mean, two different podcasts. Um, one of them is called Café con, pa, con Pam. Café con Pam. And um, so that's a play on words, guys, for if you guys, just in case, because Café con Pan means like coffee with like sweet bread. And then, so her name is Pam. So you see, and oh, awesome. Okay. So anyway, so she, <laughs> I was in her podcast and I was just, I was talking podcasting as well as my immigration story because it is for Latinx audiences and kind of bringing uh, people of color that are doing really wonderful things in the space of digital media as well as just plain old places changing the world kind of stuff. So I was on our podcast. It was really great. And the whole concept is really neat because she also takes a break in the middle of the episode to have coffee. And so she shares the coffee. So it's, it's kind of cool. I was also on another podcast that's also with a, um, Latino audience, uh, mix. And, and this is it, her podcast is called emotions in harmony. I'll put a link to both of those episodes, but emotions in harmony, the way that she does it is really, really cool. She is, um, somebody who is re reaching the Latino audiences that are not necessarily often spoken to at all. These are the people who are like cleaning houses, the immigrants that are coming and now are looking to sort of up level their living style, their socioeconomic status, and kind of thinks about mindset and how to help yourself move up in, in society and whatever. But what really what she does really well is that she does like the podcast in Spanish and in English, and she has the same question. So when I recorded the episode, the one that she released, I believe was the Spanish uh, version. I mean, sorry, the English version. And then she's going to release the Spanish version. And what she does is that she asks the same questions, but the, even though I'm answering the same questions in both, obviously Spanish and English, she really curates the conversation and it's still different. So even if you are bilingual and you listen to both episodes, you will still get different information from the same person, even though it's the same questions. It's very, very, very interesting. Usually, and this is interesting, Rob, she does a lot of the stuff via Facebook live specifically. And one of her biggest challenges has been in getting her audience to shift to listening via RSS because the lack of education in her audience, um, subscribing to podcasts is kind of vast. And also, uh, the majority of people have not so much money but even though they don't have smartphones, even though they don't have like all of these sort of extra things that we have at times that I might be a little bit full of privilege that we get to have these smartphones and whatnot, most people have access to Facebook. So that's how she's been getting to her audience because somebody has Facebook <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's a little bit more expansive in that way. So one of her biggest challenges at this moment is to be able to transfer the knowledge that she's, you know, to a different place. Like let's expand it more through here. Cause her work is really great. So two really cool, cool podcast out there. Anyway, where are we going? Well, we will be at podcast movement in Philly in July. And I always say I'll be speaking at podcast movement. My session is yes. That marketing advice for your podcast is still BS 2018. <laughs> Uh, Elsie, your session, you want to give that Yeah, title? my session is actually about gro uh, podcasting growth, but it has nothing to do with Apple podcast or, me or measurement or anything like that. I actually will be talking about what I was just talking about, <laughs> which is the infrastructure and reaching audiences that oftentimes don't really have access to what we're doing and how we can set uh, or even start the conversations of how to uh, take podcasting to underrepresented communities. Um, th and that has nothing to do obviously with a new app or, uh, you know, a new way to measure something or a new online thing. It, this is for me, it's about advocacy and initiative. So it's just starting that conversation. Right. Yeah. And we can now also announce that Dave Jackson will be speaking at podcast movement as well. His session is in the talent track and the title is how to maximize your first impression. And this session covers the top mistakes people make at the top of their show and what to do instead. So that's definitely a session you'll want to check out. I will, let's see, outside, oh, and I should say this on Podcast Movement, 
Again, get me your business cards ASAP if you want me to bring them. If you're not going, hopefully you are going. And if you are going, get your business cards done and bring them with you. Can't, can't stress that enough. And if you want me to bring them, email me, Rob at Libsyn.com, and I'll send you my snail mail where you can send those to. Moving on, I'll be speaking at Content Marketing World in Cleveland the first week of September. And Lipson will be at NAB New York City in October. Please come out to these events uh, and say hello. Give us a fist bump. Uh, we do really like to get around the country and, and meet people. And as always, if you have an organization or event that needs someone to speak about podcasting, just email me, Rob at Lipson.com, for people that can help out on that front. I think that's it. So. Yes. If you guys have any comments, any feedback, you can email the feed at lipson.com. You can also download our free apps, which are both available for Android and, and iOS. And I suggest you guys search for the feed Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, so you can find us pretty quickly. And they're both free. And even within the app, you can call us within the app by just tapping a little button there. You can email us within the app as well. You can also comment directly on the show for the show in the show notes within the app as well. If you want to call us on the phone, 412-573-1934, 412-573-1934, and we will, you know, hopefully be able to use your audio here on the show. Thank you so much for uh, reaching out, and we will look forward to, um, you know, you guys in a couple of weeks. Ciao. Bye.